number five. The client is having some second thoughts about the current designs and calls and asks to see all the original pencil sketches from when the architects did their initial internal office meetings. The architects don't want to give them over since they don't want to confuse the situation. They, they don't want to have multiple versions of things uh, floating around. Uh, so they don't want to give them over, but the client is looking for it. Who should win the argument? All right, so we have a couple different answers here. Uh, a, the architects, they are not required to present work that they do that they no longer support. Uh, B, it would be decided by arbitration. Uh, C, the client, because they get everything. D, it would be decided by the IDM. Uh, so there's an important concept here that this is actually what's really being alluded to is uh, part of the contract, the B101, the, the owner architect uh, contract, is the idea of the instruments of service. So it's a very particular term. It's one worth remembering. Uh, instruments of service. And what that's referring to is when you're an architect and you're doing a project, you have to do a whole lot of different things, a whole lot of different types of work in order to be able to do the design. So you might be researching countertop material, or you might be researching um, uh, glass wall systems, curtain walls, something like that. It might be that you do a lot of different sketches. You might be doing um, maybe different uh, overlays of different ways that you could have uh, uh, you know, a set of offices. Maybe the you try one sort of planning bubble diagram where uh, the marketing people are next to the admin people, and then you try another one where facilities people are next to the admin people. Like you might have a lot of different sort of research things that you do before you actually get to sort of final designs and things that you're going to hand over and at you know sort of the big milestones. Um, that's all the instruments of service. It would include even memos and. Uh, all the all the other things that it takes to make a, a project happen. Intriguingly, uh, technically, the client actually has, unless it's written, unless you change the documents in some way, in the typical uh, uh, AIA contract, the client actually has uh, rights to all of your instruments of service. Now, this is not like, you know, the vast majority of the time, no client really cares about any of that. It just doesn't come, like, why would they want to look at your memos, your inner office memos or anything? Uh, it's just not something that's going to come up. But from the technical standpoint of this, the client is paying for time, and that what they're paying for, they actually have rights to see and to be able to use. So that means both the CD sets, it means the research, it means all the memos, it means any of the sketches. Um, there's a few ways you could look at this. It would depend a little bit on how things were uh, specifically worded, and it would depend a little bit on uh, how you did your timesheets and some other things like that. But the gist of it is, yes, they have the right to see this information. Uh, so C would be the correct answer. Like I said, it's kind of unlikely that they would really want to see this. Mostly it's just going to confuse everybody. Uh, that's not really the point of the question. The point of the question is, do you really grasp the idea of the instruments of service, which is that uh, there's a, it takes a lot of work to do a project, uh, and what the client is paying you for is to do all of that work. Uh, and then they also get all the drawings and everything at the end, but uh, they're paying you for all of that work. So for example, maybe you're an office that does a lot of different kinds of research. If you really wanted to keep that research in-house and not be uh, open to other people, then you wouldn't do it under the billing of a particular project. You would do it under the sort of overhead uh, work that you do in the office. Um, because if it's billed directly to a client, then they get access to that information. So hopefully that's sort of clear. Uh, a couple of the other words in here. Uh, arbitration is obviously a way of uh, doing uh, when there's disputes. 
Uh, and then the DIDM is initial decision maker. That's also a dispute resolution system. Uh, and uh, while this is talking about a dispute, neither arbitration or IDM would uh, re really come into play. Uh, the intriguing thing about the IDM, the initial decision maker, is uh, that's you. Uh, the architect is the IDM. And the idea on that one is if there's a dispute between the owner, uh, client owner, and a contractor, as they are having their dispute, the first thing they're supposed to do, the initial thing they're supposed to do, is they go to the initial decision maker and they present their case and then the architect would uh, uh, make a, a sort of ruling on it. It's not ruling, it would be kind of the wrong terminology, but uh, would, would make a decision uh, and presumably they would live with that decision if the dispute went on then it would go to either uh, arbitration or mediation or litigation or something. Um, but the idea is to have a sort of cheaper, faster way to deal with things before they get out of hand, and that would be the architect being the IDM. It doesn't have to be the architect. Sometimes there's a third-party IDM that gets delineated early on in the contract process. So IDMs are kind of interesting, but not really appropriate to this, uh, to this actual question. Okay, it looks like um, that was kind of a tricky one. It was a pretty good blend of uh, answers A, D being the two most popular answers, and then C was sort of, again, maybe like 10 or 15% of the folks thought that was the one. Yeah, um, I mean, certainly A is the one we all want, right? Um, we want to have control over what we give, give to folks. And like I said, the vast majority of time, if you actually explain to a client like, no, I don't want to give that to you because it'll give you the wrong impression. Like, you know, no client really wants to go against you on that stuff. So it, it's, uh, it's not a particularly good example from the standpoint of real life, uh, but the exam isn't about real life. The exam is about uh, kind of understanding the points of the uh, contracts.